No! Because we're not going up to 22. We're not going from 0 to 22. We're going from 100 to 22. How much did my temperature change? 78. Now, there's a change of 78 degrees there. So I use 78 calories. So all together, 6, 18 calories. We'll just, again, add them together. So then they tried the macro scale. So we have our radiator, 1,000 grams of steam condenses. Well, if one gives off 540, 1,000 is going to give off 540,000 calories. Then it's going to cool from 100 to 90. That was kind of our demonstration. It, you know, it comes down pretty rapidly. 100 to 90, well, one, if I would have had one gram going from 100 to 90, that would be how many calories? That would be 10. But I have 1,000. 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. 10,000 calories, so total of 5,500 calories. Then they went through it. In the second half of that page, they kind of go through that whole thing again in a different way. But it's, it's, if you notice, it's the same numbers. Same numbers on that. Questions? Michael, you okay? Yeah. All right. So that was that same mark. Let's look at this one. This is my help you. Lonnie didn't answer this. But when I'm in the desert, unlike the tropics, now why is the tropics, does it ever get cold at night? Anybody know why? What? I heard it. Moisture. Lots of humidity because the jungles of the Amazon are basically the same latitude as the Sahara Desert. They're the same place. They're the same distance from the equator. What's the difference? In the tropics, you have enormous amounts of water in the air. Very high humidities. you got to remember, what is the largest, what is the greatest greenhouse gas? Water. Water vapor is the largest greenhouse gas by tons. Not carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is way down. Put it this way, of gases in the atmosphere, if we equate that, there's 10,000 people in a stadium, and they represent all the types of gases in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide would be for the people in that stadium. Out of that 10,000, four are carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is basically plant food. Carbon dioxide goes a little bit up a little bit, plants grow better. If it goes down a little bit, plants don't grow. So actually lowering carbon dioxide actually takes away from plant yields, crop yields, actually causes crop failure, things like that. But anyway. Water. Lots of water in the tropics. Now, in the desert, where there is very little water in the air, what happens at night? It's it really, really cold. It's like even the Sahara Desert, it gets close to freezing at night in the Sahara Desert. Yes, it's very hot in the day. It gets very close to freezing at night. It's very, very cold. So, which means when we do this, what's going to happen at night to the water in the air, this tarp is going to get very cold. Now remember, the tarp is going to cool down a lot. And what's going to, at night, what's going to start to condense on the tarp? Water. That very little water, but we're going to get very close to the dew point. So water condenses on the tarp, and it runs down, and it falls in the cup. Some people say, well, you get moisture from the ground. Well, believe me, you're in the Sahara Desert. You got to you have to dig a long way to get to any type of groundwater to get any soil, that it's going to be damp. Mostly, it's coming from the air, but it's condensing on the inside. So this is why we do this. This doesn't get you a lot of water, but it might keep you enough water to keep you alive on that. But it's all about physics. All right. Evaporation. That one? Oh. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, what's your question? Why? Why? Or, 
because when, temp when pressure goes down, the boiling pr temperature goes down. And for everything, I mean, that's one of those things. This water is the same for everything. Their water is different on its melting, boiling, that melting, freezing point. But for all substances, their boiling point goes down when you go to a lower pressure on that. So it doesn't. So the water never gets as hot. It still boils. It just doesn't boil as at high a temperature. So it doesn't get as hot. Yes. Well, the plastic is cold, and, and basically it gives a place for the water to condense on. Well, because everything else is getting cold. I mean, remember, it's going to get cold in the desert, but it's just going to give a place for the water to condense on. And because we're letting it, we're basically have it angled, it will run down and it will drip off the low point into the cup. Yes, sir. <coughs> when I am done. All right, evaporation. So you have the way to put it. Why is he going to pull on a windy day? Even if it's a hot windy day, why, is it, why do you feel cold? Well, what's happening to that water in your skin? It's evaporating. It's becoming away. And when it evaporates, it takes heat away from your body. And especially on a windy day, because as the air passes across you, it carries it away. It's that convecting process. So it takes those air molecules away, things like that. Same thing happens with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is a much lower, much lower boiling point than water does. So it, it will evaporate much more rapidly. Alcohol uh, evaporates much more rapidly than water does, especially on your body. It's going to go away very quickly, so it's going to draw a lot of heat away. And we've talked about that kind of ad nauseum. So, nice little problem here. We have the four grams of boiling water. So, in 100 degree water, I pour it on the car, one evaporates. One gram evaporates. Now, where is that one gram getting enough energy? <coughs> Where is it getting that extra energy to evaporate? Remember, it's, it's a 100 degree liquid. One gram becomes 100 degree gas. Where does it get that energy from? Where does that one gram get the energy from? Gets it from the other three, right? It pulls it from the other three. <coughs> so each one was giving up 180 calories to that other gram because they split the five they had to absorb 540 from the other three so each one gave up 180. we're going to leave that idea aside for a while so that's that's out there in the wind how many calories so first of all if i want to go from one gram 100 degree c liquid to one if i go from let's see when i go from 100 degree c liquid to zero degree water now we're starting with liquid when I go from 100 to zero, how much does how much energy does one gram release? When I go from 100 to zero, it gives up 100 calories. How many calories does one gram of water go to go from liquid to ice? 80. So we could say that anything, anything, any, if I have a gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius that gives up 180 calories, what will its state be at the end? It will be at zero degrees and be liquid or ice. Ice. So what happened to the other three grams? They became zero degrees C ice. So one became steam. The other three became ice. Questions? All right, let's go back to our notes. We do have one little bit of note thing left, and then you got a problem for you to practice because there's some things like this on the test. Do, 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 do. Oh, where is it? Oh, right there. Entropy. Now, entropy is another part of the second law. It's another part of the second law, and its symbol is a capital S. Our unit is the joule per Kelvin. In other words, J per K. And it's the amount of disorder in a system. How much disorder? Well, it's the measurement of disorder. And 
natural systems tend to greater disorder. It's kind of like I take my little, I take a Cheerio here. I take my little Cheerio here. Now, are these Cheerios fairly orderly right now? Yeah, I mean, they're nice little O's. They're nice little O's right there. They're nice little O's and all that. Are they orderly anymore? Don't look orderly to me. Looks like a lot of disorder. So I increase the entropy of these Cheerios. Increase the entropy of the Cheerios. This is what natural systems make. And you can say, well, you know, Miss Trees, I look at a tree out there. A tree is a pretty orderly thing. And I would agree with you. A tree is an orderly thing. But we have to think something beyond the tree. How much energy did it take to make the tree? A lot or a little? A lot. The tree, just like anything else, represents a certain amount of energy. That tree sitting there can be equated to a certain amount of energy. Do you think it took the same amount of energy to make it as is standing there right now? You think it took more energy to make it? Yeah. We know it didn't take less because that would be a violation of the first law, wouldn't it? Yeah. What does the second law always tell us? There are, the second law always tell us that we can never break even. Heat engines can't break even. Natural systems can't break even. Always losing energy. Things cannot go to a more orderly state. Everything tends to more disorder. I can locally make order, but it causes greater disorder in the universe. Greater disorder in the universe. Nope, oh, that's something else. Greater disorder in the universe. So we're always going. In fact, eventually all energy becomes heat. Heat out there. In fact, it leads to a theory called the heat death of the universe. Eventually all the useful energy in the universe will be used up. And all there will be is this heat out there. Because remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but only transformed. That doesn't mean I can use it. It's out there, can't use it, universe comes to an end. Heat death of the, of the universe. This is why the, that's why the average temperature of the universe is 4 Kelvin. You know, the universe is mostly what? A lot of what? N-word. Nothing. The universe is a lot of nothing. There is very little. In fact, there, you know, there's, a, there's a series of books called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. 